Hi, this is Trenisha Cottrell, and today I wanted to talk about rock. So what made me talk about, what made me think about rock is the other day I was listening to this sermon and the pastor talked about God being our rock. And, and also it's so funny because yesterday's video was going to be about the rock being about God being our rock. And it just, a few other things happened. I learned a few things yesterday that changed the traje trajectory of the message. And when God was moving in me, he was telling me that there was something else that I had to say. And so today, <laughs> when my pastor and church reiterated God being our rock, it really, it really reminded me of what God put on my heart to say in the beginning. And it was like a validation that I needed to continue with the word about God being a rock and to, to spread that word and to allow other people to know and to remind others that whenever we're going through something, we can always lean on God and not on our own understanding. And so <laughs> when I listened to the sermon a few days ago, I guess it's been a couple days and the pastor was talking about a few different things he he gave like a scripture and I'm probably going to butcher the whole thing so I'm not gonna I'm just only going to say what's on my heart what's what's moving in my spirit to say and not anything else and so <laughs> when the pastor talked about the story in the bible and he was talking about how in our life we may go through certain things and we feel certain ways about things we we are just like oh, you know, I I don't know how I'm going to make it through this. Or we, God will bring us through one thing and we'll feel amazing. And it'll be like, oh my gosh, you know, God can do all things. He can perform miracles. And we remember what he's doing when he's doing it for us. But as soon as we go through another test or trial or tribulation or storm in our life, sometimes we forget that God is who he is. And I'm guilty of this as well. I'm not I'm not going to just walk away scot free from this one and pretend like or pretend as if I've never been in this situation where I felt like I know God's brought me through other things, but I don't know how he's going to bring me through this. But then I'm reminded through a sermon or through the word of God or I'm reminded through a complete stranger that God is who he said he is. And I think it's important for us to keep in our back pocket the the word that God said when he says that he is our rock to remember to have it to have it in our back pocket to have it on the front forefront of our minds just to always keep it front loaded that God is our rock even when we're going through hard times even when things don't work out our way even when we might want something at a specific time in our life and God is saying not yet. It's not that he can't do it. It's that it's in a, a, at, a, at an appointed time. And we have to remember that God is not a genie in a bottle. He's not a, you snap your fingers and all of a sudden you get everything that you want. He is a loving God. And because he loves and care about it, cares about us, he's not going to give us something prematurely. He's not, not just going to give it to us because we want it at this very moment. If God is saying, this is the person that's for you and, you know, he's telling you good things about this person and he's showing you that person. He is not trying to be mean to you by dangling that person in front of your face. He's not trying to and watch out for that as well, because Satan will do the same thing. He knows what it is that you like and you have to make sure that you're making the best decision for yourself based on what God wants and not just based on what you want or what your flesh wants. And it's it's really important to remember that because you can get so sidetracked. You can get easily manipulated. The adversary will use that to play on your insecurity. He'll make you feel a certain type of way. He'll make you feel like, I don't understand why this person isn't trying with me. And they're not trying because they're not for you or it's not the right time. It has absolutely nothing to do with you at all. And it's easy for us to blame ourselves and feel like it's something that we're doing wrong and, you know, feel like, oh, maybe I'm just not good enough or, you know, all of those insecure 
things that just float through your mind that the adversary wants to use against you to make you weaker so that you don't live in your purpose. And it's all that in, in mental warfare, because sometimes we are at war with ourselves. Sometimes we're the, our worst enemy. And people around you can be saying, I'm so proud of you and congratulations. And, you know, all of the things that you're doing are helping so many people. And you could you could feel that you're helping change people's lives. And the adversary can say, well, you didn't change this person's life or but you still don't have this. Whatever that one thing is that you don't have yet. And notice I said yet because God, my God is not the God of lack. If there is something that is needed in my life that God wants me to have, I'm going to get it. It's not a matter of of when it's going to happen, really, because it's really at God's time and whenever he sees fit. It's, a, it's just a matter of how. We don't know how it's going to happen. We really don't know when it's going to happen, even though it's happening at the perfect time that God intended it to happen. And it's so easy to grow weary, but we need to remember that we can't grow weary in well-doing and doing well and doing good. And sometimes people around you will make you weary. They'll make you doubtful. They'll make you second guess yourself. And today the pastor said something that was so helpful. He said that sometimes what God has for you is just for you to know and no one else. And I am not going to lie and pretend like in the past I haven't done this. I've had God give me a word or say something to me and I've told someone or something about it. And instead of it being a blessing, it ended up being a, a curse and it ended up hindering me and it ended up <laughs> biting me biting me in the you know and it wasn't just because God can't make it happen it's because I became so sure of what was going to happen as if I was going to make it happen when really it was something that God needed to do in his time and we have to remember that when God puts a vision on us when he wants something to happen in our lives it's only for us to know it's not for us to tell everyone else prematurely before we've reached our destination. We can be a motivation or inspiration for others. But sometimes when God tells us things like, let's say God said, this person is your husband. It's not for me to tell the guy or friends or family members or anything that God said that this is the person that's for me. It's for God to make that guy see that he's the person for me. I, I have no control over that. No matter what I do, it will never be enough for what God can do in that person's life. And so it's difficult because when you know something that someone else doesn't know, and sometimes when you know it and you tell someone, they, they can use it to manipulate you and make you more insecure and be like, well, you know, you're the person for me anyways. And if God said it, then I don't have to do anything. Like they could just get lax and just really feel like it's not going to be something that they need to put any effort into because God's taking care of it. But I think that it's important for us to remember that faith without works is dead. You can't just act like God is going to do people stuff. <laughs> he can do what he can do, but he's not in charge of free will. And so while you're fighting against it, while you're pretending like as if it's not important because God already said it. God said it because it was something for you to know, whether it's for hope or if it's just so that he can allow you to see certain things so that you can move in certain ways in your life so that you don't have to worry about certain things and you can continue to push forward without that being something that's constantly on your mind or draining you or taking energy from your purpose. And when you allow someone else to know something that only God intended you to know, it can change, it can change your story. And instead of it happening naturally without force in a, in a natural flow in the perfect time, it will happen in a crazy time where things will go wrong and it'll be like some big, big, horrible, like miscommunication, a hot mess of a situation. Like it, it really will go every way, but right. When you try to do things on your own, instead of doing them God's way. 
and <laughs> we really have to remember who God is and really keep our our purpose, whatever it is that we're doing to ourselves. When I was writing my book, it was so hard not to tell people that I was writing a book. Like I, when people would say, oh, what are you doing? You're not doing this with your business. You're not going this place. But I would be doing like a class about like different writing styles and ways to like elaborate on a message and formatting. And I would I would be doing so many different things to learn and gain more knowledge about writing and how to become a better author and how to engage the audience and things like that. And although it didn't look like to other people that I was doing anything because I might have been home or I might have been, you know, I might have had a course, but it was just an hour or two or something like that and or a couple hours. And so the rest of the day they see me and they just see that, you know, I went to church and I came home. And then a couple of hours later, I ended up at a family member or friend's function. And it just looked like super easy. Like I just, it just happened naturally. And God was constantly working on me. He was working some of that insecurity out, that doubt. Every time I would feel like, who's going to listen to me? Like, why would anyone want to hear my story? God would be like, am I not God? Like, did I not tell you to do this? you are doing this for my glory. This has nothing to do with you. <laughs> Not in that way. Like, of course, he's using my missteps, my mistakes, the things that I've done wrong in my life to help other people, which is a true blessing. And it's a testimony in, in full. And I wouldn't be able to do any of it with the God, without God. And even though people looked at me and it looked like it was just like, oh, I said I was going to write a book. And the next thing you know, the book was published. Like when the book was finished, and God said that I could tell people for promotional purposes and, you know, giving him glory when people would ask me about my testimony and I would tell them. And then I would say, you know, I wrote a book about it and people would be like, oh, my gosh, you know, I have to get this book. And I wasn't doing it because I wanted to sell books. I was doing it because God told me to do it. And I wanted to help people who were in my situation and let people know that they're not alone. And. I wanted them to see that even me, even even if he if he could use somebody like me, he could use anybody. And I know you're saying that you're probably like, you couldn't have been that bad. But when you really go and you walk in the way of the world, when you really do things that are only beneficial to you, when you are selfishly going through life, when you are doing things with, with the wrong intentions, no good can come of that. And you can try to manipulate the situation. You can try to make it seem like it's going to be better. You can do whatever you want to do that makes it seem like things are going to be however you want it to be, but it never turns out right. Every time I try to do things for my own selfish gain or that we're not godly or that we're more worldly or because of society or just really out of selfish reasons every single time it ended horribly. And I would be like, I don't understand why nothing's working out, but nothing was working out because God's hand wasn't in it. And I, I mean, there are some things like you work hard and you get to pay for things. Okay. That's normal stuff. And it's still a blessing that God allowed you to be able to do that, especially when you were being selfish. Sometimes <laughs> it's easy to think that you're the one who's doing things in your life. You're like, well, I worked hard. Yes, you worked hard and working hard. Sometimes there are benefits to it. But I'm, a, I'm gonna tell you one thing. When I work hard and it's, I'm all about God, the blessings that I receive are nowhere near as great as they are with God. The everything that I could get that would be a benefit to me is just like, small compared to what it is that God has been doing in my life and the way that he's been moving through me. And it's really incredible. It's really something that you'd have to experience on your own in order to see what the difference is. Because I could explain it. I could say the cliche terms that most Christians say. I could, you know, say God is good all the time, which is very true. 
it it is not going to there's no way that I could be able to verbalize how good God is and show you the things that he did in my life. I could tell you a few things, but those are just a few things. That's not me explaining everything. That's not even the things that God did when I wasn't around. The people that he removed out of my life when I didn't know that they needed to be removed for whatever reason. When I asked God to illuminate things in my life, he really truly did. And he showed me exactly what it was that I needed to know. And (laughs) <laughs> you better get ready when you ask God for things because you will never expect what it is that he blesses you with or what it is that he does in your life. And you won't understand it. It'll be, it'll make no sense. It'll be out of nowhere. It's like, it's like every job that I've got since I started my career has been a complete blessing. It's, It's been situations like I shouldn't even be here. How did I even get an interview? How did I even get in this position? And God just constantly keeps working in my life and allowing things to happen out of nowhere. He introduces people in my life that I didn't even know I needed in my life. People that really do teach and show me things about myself that I didn't even I didn't even know that I did or I didn't even know that I I wanted to become better at. He's showing me that. I used to be the type of person who wanted to be like all about certain things in my life. And in this season of my life, God has been showing me that I need to be all about him and all about what it is that he intends for me to do and not just for my own selfish benefit. And I say it like that because it's so easy to become selfish and think about me, me, me. I want this. I want that. I don't want this. I don't want that. Ooh, I would like to do this. Oh, you know, I want to go on a trip. I want to do this. I want to, you want to do all these things, but are you asking God, is that what he wants you to do? Is that how he wants you to move? Is that how he wants you to use the money? And I'm not saying that he doesn't want you to enjoy your life because he absolutely wants you to enjoy life and time with your family and things like that. So I'm not saying that at all, but really, truly think about when you make decisions. Is this just for my benefit or for God's benefit? Is me spending time with my family beneficial to God? Yes, it is, because I'm enjoying my life. I'm appreciating the people who actually care and love me. Is me going to this party beneficial to me or to God? It depends if it's a birthday party for an aunt and I am going there and I am carrying myself in a good way and I'm having fun and enjoying myself and I'm not just being over the top or doing the most. I really am just leading with love and kindness everywhere I go, no matter where I am. Then yes, that could be beneficial to God. Somebody could see me in that environment and say, oh, wow, you know, I see the things that you post and the things that you do. And you really truly are living that life. And I also want to say this, and I hope it helps someone. One um, TJ, TG Jr. said that he lives his life like as if people are right there with them or something like that, or God is right there with them. And it really helped me when I was going through like that period of my life where I had first rededicated my life to God because sometimes it can be easy to be influenced by others or for other people to be around you and you to feel like, oh, I need to be this way or I need to act that way or I need to change who I am because of this person or something like that. And it really helps me when I'm doing anything in life if I think if is God going to be pleased with me doing this. That's what I think of no matter where I am or what I'm doing. If I am in this room serving in this video because God told me that he wants me to use my voice and my testimony and things that I've been through, been through to relate to others and encourage them and inspire them and let them know that everything's going to be okay and to put everything in God's hands, then I know that I'm doing this and it's beneficial to God. If this is just an example and I haven't done this, but I've seen other parents do this. If I am, if I have a child and, or let's say it this way, if I'm talking to my mom and, or a parent and they're saying something and it's just like, 
it's getting on my nerves. And I'm just going to say it like that because, you know, that way people can relate. And it's getting on my nerves. But would it be beneficial to God for me to say something rude and disrespectful to my parent when I when I would be dishonoring him or her? It wouldn't. So in that situation, because I know God's always watching and I want to be a good child of God, I make sure that I'm still respect, respectful regardless if I, someone's getting on my nerves or saying something that I don't like or whatever else. Yes, I could, you know, stand up for myself, but standing up for myself does not look like disrespect. It looks like being respectful and still voicing my opinion in a very respectful way because it's my parent, not because... I feel like it'll benefit me or because, you know, I'm only looking out for myself. Sometimes, regardless of what you say, some people are set in their ways. And I'm not saying this about parents. I'm saying in general. And you can't change how other people think, but you can change how you think and what you do in that situation. Not everybody's going to be on the same page as you. Not everybody's going to think exactly like you. But when I remind myself that I'm doing this for God and would God be pleased with me doing this this way? It really makes me put things into perspective and make the best decisions that I can in that moment. And I say it like that because sometimes we feel like we have to be perfect. We could strive for, for perfection and, and do things the right way, but it does not mean that we will not make mistakes. And God knows that because we are human and Jesus died for our sins. He knows that we're all going to sin. We don't intentionally go out and sin. And I know that Regardless of what's happening, if we are doing everything with the best of intentions, God's covering us. We, we can repent, we can take it to God, and God can take us the rest of the way. So without making this video too long, <laughs> in conclusion, remember that God is your rock. And when you say rock, you think of rock cliff. Rock cliff means refuge. And having a place like God as a refuge is everything. When you feel like you have nowhere else to turn, when you feel like things are not going to work out the way that you wanted them to, and it will not always work out just the way that you see fit. It'll work out the way that God sees fit. But when you feel like you're getting weary and you feel like you can't see an end or how it's going to work out, know that God is your refuge and he's got you. He got you for real. And it's not that person that you're calling on and they just are nowhere to be found. He's always there for you. So don't ever feel like you have to go through a relationship, a job, changes in your life, problems in your family, in a hospital bed, whatever else it is. You don't have to go through any of that alone because God will be there with you. He, <laughs> in times when I feel weak, when I can't see the outcome because no one knows what their future is going to look like, God always reminds me that He's got me, that he's going to be there with me regardless of what happens in my life. And it's not always going to be happy. It's not always going to be the things that I imagined it to be, but it's going to be everything that God intended to happen in my life. And he's right there with me. So he can be the strength that I need when I feel weak. He can be the person that I call on when nobody's around. He can be the thing that lifts me up when I feel like there's no reason to get out of bed or I feel like. Life is just attacking me so hard. I don't know how I'm going to make it to the next day. And before I had him in my life, I would have turned to something totally horrible. I would have, I don't know how I would have continued on. And thank God I'm still here. If it wasn't for him, I don't know. I know this is so cliche, but I really don't know where I would be without him. I can't imagine my life without him now. Before, I just felt like, oh, you know, I got it. I can do this. I can do this. I can do all of it on my own. And God's saying, you don't have to do it on your own because I'm right here with you. And I hope <laughs> this message was helpful and that you remember no matter what is happening in your life or who's around or not around or who left or who came into your life, you know that God is the constant and he will always be your rock. 